Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for today's webcast in the LiDAR series. Today we're going to be taking a look at extracting vector features from classified LiDAR data. So this will be a continuation of the previous workflow where we took a couple of point clouds and classified them um, using the automatic classification tools. So this is where we really start to extract some powerful data out of our LiDAR point data set. So we can create some vector features that represent a number of different things in the landscape. So if your data is unclassified or not well classified and you didn't get a chance to look at that video, then you want to go back and take a look at classifying LiDAR data with the automatic classification tools. We could also be applying this feature extraction to already existing classified LiDAR data. So you might have gotten data from a source that has already applied some classification to it. Um, and we could use these same algorithms with that data. So today we're going to take a look at extracting building features from the point cloud. So this will create area polygons, and we can also represent those in 3D, uh, ex either extruded to the surface or actually pick up on the side features of the building as well. Then we'll take a look at extracting tree features from our point cloud. So this can include tree points at the center point of each tree, and also it can include coverage polygons representing the spread of each tree. So we'll look at both of those, and that will create a nice inventory of our tree area. So since each of those vector features is going to get attributes based on the point cloud, so we'll get things like the coverage area and the maximum spread of the tree, the height of it above ground, we're really creating a very powerful inventory that can be used to query data or summarize data. We can also take those tree points and represent them in 3D as 3D models. Um, so you'll see in the image on the left, I've got some tree 3D models there that are being scaled based on the attributes of each of those points. So we'll take a look at how to set that up as well. And finally, we're going to take a look at extracting power lines out of our classified LiDAR data. So using those classified points, we'll be able to identify strings of points that match a linear pattern, and we'll actually get linear features out of the point cloud. So in this first workflow, we're going to take a look at extracting building features from our classified point cloud. So I've loaded up the same classified point cloud that we worked with in the previous video. And our buildings are being represented here as orange points. Uh, we've also got some vegetation here in green. Um, and we're going to look at extracting some features based on that data. You'll notice that I am running Global Mapper version 18.2. So this is, if you're watching this webcast just as it's been produced, um, this is actually a sneak peek at the upcoming version. We will provide a live webinar shortly covering some of the new functionality, but you'll notice that we have brought back some of the control center buttons to get to some of that quick information like the layer options and the metadata. Um, I'll just mention that since it's some new buttons in the interface there. I've also turned on a vector legend, so you can see what my classified data is here. So before performing this vector extraction, it can be a good idea to QA your data set to make sure that you've got some good building classification here. So I did use the profile tool on this data set. And in addition to what was done in the previous video, I did do some of the suggested areas here. So for example, this bridge overpass um, right along this road here that did get originally classified as building points um, because it is flat features above the ground. So I went ahead and reclassified those so they wouldn't get included in this extraction process as building. So in order to bring up this tool, I'm going to go to the LiDAR toolbar and pick the fourth button here, Extract Vector Features. So I'm using my loaded point cloud here for Portland. My first setting here is going to be the resolution at which, at which to extract my features. Um, and this is actually a combined resolution for both the building and tree extraction. Um, you can actually run all three of these algorithms at the same time if you want to. Um, right now I'm just going to turn on the building footprint section here. Um, and so I need to specify what resolution I'm going to be looking for these vector features inside of. And that can be done either in point spacings or in meters. So if you had, for example, a lot of tiles of LiDAR data, um, it's a good idea to use 
a consistent number here instead of a statistic from each individual point cloud that's going to be slightly different across the data set. Um, so that's where you might want to use meters. Um, in this case, we're just going to go with the statistics of my single point cloud here and just look in within one point spacing, try and identify these building features. Um, I've got some pretty large buildings here, so I don't need to look in super detailed area. So one point spacing should be plenty. And I've turned on the extract 3D building footprints here. And I, I've also turned on this advanced feature here to create separate areas for the different roof pieces. Um, so this is going to help create consistent area features for some of those roofs that might not be just flat planes. So they might be different roof sections um, with different pitches in them that might have different angles. Um, and this basic al algorithm is looking at our point cloud and comparing it to a plane. So that is identified from the average points. And so we want to make sure that we're creating buildings um, for parts of roofs that might have some different pitches as well. Um, and we can control just exactly what the tolerance there is between the different pieces that might be part of the same roof um, and the distance to that plane. So based on the resolution of our data, um, we're looking about within a quarter meter here, um, allowing some deviation. Obviously, that LiDAR data is not going to be in a perfect plane, um, exactly reflecting exactly the same height off of those roof structures. Um, so we need a little bit of a tolerance there in order to um, allow more points to be included in these vectors. And finally, we've got a simplification algorithm at the bottom that we can use. And I have bumped this up a little bit. So this is very similar to the digitizer tool simplification. So when we create these vector polygons around these buildings, um, they could have very detailed vertices connecting each individual ladder point. Um, typically, you don't need that for buildings, right? We would expect them to be fairly square or rectangular footprints. Um, so it's a good idea to do some extra simplification, remove some of those vertices. Um, and I bumped that all the way up to four, so we'll get some pretty basic building outlines here. Um, we don't need tons of detail. Um, obviously, I'm expecting pretty rectangular footprints for my buildings. We've got some recurring buttons here in the bottom right of our dialog. So I could specify a smaller bounds to run this algorithm on, this extraction. So if I wanted to test this out in a smaller area, um, or maybe I want to subset it and use some different settings in different parts of my data. Um, for example, the residential area down here, I might want some slightly different settings than the larger commercial buildings up at the top. So that would be a way to segment my data set um, or to just test it out on a small area. I can also access the filtering option. So this is the advanced filtering tools for LiDAR. Um, so on top of the classification, um, I also could specify things like the height above ground, um, some of those extra statistics that have been calculated out of the point cloud or that are already in the point attributes. And finally, I have the ability to just restore the default numbers here. So if you've tinkered with these numbers a bunch of times, um, you can always go back to kind of our default standard factory settings for all of these different um, values here. And just like with the algorithm, this is kind of a test it out on an area, see how it does, um, optimize it, and then when you're happy with the settings for that particular data set, then you can run it on the full area. So I went ahead and ran that. Um, and now we've got some vector features representing each of these buildings. So you'll notice in my legend down here that I've actually got some different polygon types here, some different area types. And um, that's because I checked the option to create sidewalls for my area feature. So in addition to polygons representing the roof area, um, I also have some different polygons for the floor and the sidewalls. Um, so I could interact with those separately if I wanted to by splitting the layer. Um, I'm just going to keep them together for now. And this is a regular vector layer now, so I can interact with this with the digitizer tool. I can export this to any supported vector format. Um, I can also edit these quickly, so just like any regular vector. Um, if I wanted to do some cleanup, so for example, this polygon here, I might want to fix this little extrusion on the edge. So I'll just quickly do that with the digitizer. I'm going to show my vertices here so I can edit them. And using the Alt key on my keyboard, I'll just select 
this little area here and you'll notice that I'm already quickly in move mode so I can just move that vertex line it up with the rest of that building there so if I wanted to modify these features any of the digitizer tools to manipulate them let's take a look also how this is appearing in 3d for us and you'll notice that I have created a terrain layer here so out of my point cloud I have created a ground layer that gives me something for the buildings to sit on we will cover that in the next video, how to generate that from the point cloud. So now I've got some 3D building features that are building on top of my terrain data here. And I can interact with this. <clears throat> nice representation of my buildings. And I can tell from my imagery here that's draped on the surface that I'm doing a pretty good job for these buildings here. And again, this was freely available, fairly moderate resolution LiDAR data. So if you have nice detailed high resolution data with multiple points per square meter, you're gonna get even better building footprints here. So I mentioned previously that we can also use these extraction algorithms if you have custom classifications for your LiDAR data. So if they're not using the standard ASPRS categories or class codes, um, and I'll show you where to set that just very quickly here. So I'm going to go to my LiDAR toolbar and go to the filter LiDAR data dialog. And if I right click on one of my categories here, obviously if it was a custom class, I could change the description. But in terms of the vector extraction algorithms, it's the class group um, that we need to assign in order to make a classification become part of that vector extraction. So I'm just going to go to buildings here and you'll see that the building classification in, the, in my standard scheme here uh, is part of the building and structure group. And that means that it will be used in that vector extraction algorithm. And the same thing would apply for the vegetation points and the power line points. So they would need to be part of those categories if they were custom classes. Um, the built-in ones are going to be correct already. But if you're not using those standard class codes, then that's where you would go to um, include your particular scheme in the vector extraction. Okay, so now that I've extracted buildings, I'm going to go ahead and use the same data set here and extract some vegetation points. So I'm going to go back to my extraction tool. And this time I'm going to turn off buildings and switch over to extracting tree points. Um, so again, I want to specify the resolution at which I'm going to extract those trees. Um, this is going to affect the number of trees that are identified in the point cloud. Um, so you want to, again, I would recommend looking at a sample area. Perhaps you know roughly how many trees are there. And kind of adjusting these settings, particularly this one, to get a good expected result there. Um, a few other settings that we can adjust here, the minimum tree height. So I'm expecting my trees to be 4 meters. This is, again, aerial LiDAR data, moderate resolution. So I'm not going to be able to pick up on you know, little shrubs or some of those smaller features. I'm really just getting the big trees here um, in these settings. And then for the tree spread, I'm expecting at least 3 meters. Um, so really just picking up on the larger trees, um, not all vegetation here. And I've got a maximum spread as well, so I could adjust that um, if I did have, you know, some expected really large trees, kind of depending on what kind of forested area you're looking at. Then I have a setting for what point type to assign to the point features when they're created. So this is going to be the styling that they're assigned, and this tree one built in by default has a little tree symbol. Um, we'll just stick with using that, but if I wanted to use a different feature type here, um, I could choose that. We also have an option here to create tree coverage polygons. So this is going to be a polygon representing the spread of the tree. So we'll go ahead and create those as well. And so that will give us an idea of the spread. And again, we could use these same settings here to look at a smaller bounds area, uh, maybe test this out on a smaller area. I'll show you that one in this case. Um, so a, a common workflow here would be to draw a box and maybe look in a smaller area here or something like that. Um, that would be a way to just test it out 
and sample the data. I could also obviously use a selected area feature. Um, maybe if I had a some kind of boundary, um, property boundary or something that I wanted to look inside of, um, I could be running it just within that area feature. And again, that advanced filtering. Um, so if I wanted to use perhaps the RGB values or the intensity values or some other things that might help identify the vegetation, um, I could do that as well. Um, and if you've got in, uh, infrared values as well. If, if you did extract those from an image or if your ladder data came with that, then NDVI would be really helpful for vegetation. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see that I've got, uh, let's turn off the LiDAR point cloud again so we can take a look at this a little bit closer. Um, so we've got two different features here that are combined in this extracted trees layer. We've got point features representing the center of the tree and we've got this black polygon representing the spread of the tree, so the crown, the spread of that crown. And I did create both of those at the same time, so um, if I wanted to split these out now, maybe so I can interact with them separately, I can easily do that. I'm just going to select that layer from the control center go up to my layer menu and I'm going to split that. So split into separate layers based on an attribute. And in this case, I'm just going to use the feature type. So they'll have different types here um, because they are different geometry. And that will create some separate sub layers for my polygon areas and my trees. And so the polygon areas here have some attributes associated with them. Let's just use the info tool here to take a look at the different features. So I've got a point here. Just bring this dialog on screen here. Um, so each of these tree points has an elevation, a height, an average spread, and a maximum spread that was extracted out of that point cloud. And then the polygons as well have uh, the same statistics here. Uh, so either of those things we could use, we could also extract, you know, an area value if that was meaningful. Um, calculate that using the digitizer. And let's take a look at the vector search here. So we can look at the whole inventory of these trees. So for example, we might want to perform some querying on this layer. So if I wanted to find the tallest trees in this area, I'm going to take a look at just the point features, just my tree points, so I'll turn off my areas here. Um, I could also do it by layer. Uh, and then I can perform some querying, so taking a look at the height value, for example, I could find all the trees that are taller than, um, you know, say 15 meters. And that search will be as a number. And then if I select all of those, they'll be synchronized um, in the digitizer tool as well, so I can take a look at what I found here. I'll just move my dialog out of the way here and we can see how we've identified some of the tallest trees in the area. So that really is a full inventory um, that really has some powerful information, information associated with it and that came just from the ladder point cloud um, using that vector extraction process. So I'll just clear my selection here and I also mentioned that we could look at the tree points in 3D. Um, so I'm going to turn off the polygons here. We want to just use the point features here. We're going to represent these as 3D models. Um, I'll turn the buildings back on as well. Uh, so in order to do this, um, this is actually not enabled by default. I'm going to need to go into my configuration and set up a 3D point style for my tree feature type. So I'm going to go to the point style section here. And again, this is the configuration dialog. And I want to find my tree type. So you remember in the extraction window, we specified what type our output points are going to be in. And I chose tree, so now I'm going to go to tree here, and I can specify a 3D model for that type. So we've got a couple of built-in 3D models here. Um, we've been expanding this, different tree options, conifers or deciduous style here. Um, I'll go ahead and go for a stylized pine, just because we're in Maine, we do tend to have more of those, but I could use different models for different trees if I wanted to. So that is going to represent my tree point as a 3D model. So now when we bring up the 3D viewer,
So now in the 3D view, we're going to see each of those trees scaled based on that height value. So I've got some smaller trees here for the smaller areas, some larger tree features here um, based on those point attributes. So in this last workflow, we're going to take a look at extracting power lines out of the classified LiDAR data. So this is the same LiDAR data set that we used previously to identify power line points. Uh, they're a little bit hard to see here in yellow, but again, if I use my profile tool, I can take a look at exactly what's going on in the cross-section of this data. So we've got a number of points here in yellow that represent these power lines. These are high tension lines um, running ac across a large swath of uh, land here. So I'm going to go to the vector extraction tool again. And we want to disable extracting trees here. We're going to take a look at this last section, extracting power line features. So this vector extraction process is looking for linear features within the data um, using that power line class. And we've got a few different settings that we can adjust here. So the maximum distance from that hypothetical linear feature. So this would be a tolerance um, in the x and y direction. And then we've also got a maximum delta. So that would be the change um, in angle between the different sections. We've also got a minimum length of the line that we're going to keep. So we might find some pretty short line segments, you know, of half a meter or something, and we don't necessarily want to keep all of the points that fall in some kind of line. There's going to be um, a lot of those. So we'll stick with just the sort of larger segments here. And then again, there might be reasons to run this on a smaller area um, or to filter the data set. Um, we'll just run this on the full data set in this case. So now I've got some linear features created representing those power lines. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my point cloud here so we can see this better. And this style by default is actually a dashed line. So this, these line segments are not quite as choppy as they look. Um, let's take a look at them in 3D here. So if I look at an angle here, we're going to see just how long these line segments are. So we've got some pretty good coverage here. Let's bump up the elevation a little bit so we can exaggerate exactly what's going on. So because of those settings, we have still connected lines as they sort of dip with the sag in the line there. Um, so that was some of the settings that we specified. And we're doing a pretty good job here, but we do need to do a little bit of connection, you know, particularly where those support uh, poles are, the towers. Um, and also there's a few sections where they just don't quite connect. There wasn't enough data here. So we can go ahead and do some additional editing um, to join these layers. So just so I can see uh, my lines here a little bit better, I'm going to change the way that they're styled. I'll just do that for the layer here. I'm going to double click on the extracted power lines layer and go to the line styles tab. And I'm just going to use the same style that I specify here. So I'm going to pick a solid line, bump up the width a little bit here, and I can specify a color as well. So let's change that to a dark gray. So we should be able to see these line features a little bit better now. And I can do some additional editing here to clean up the sections that are not correctly connected. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in on a smaller area here. So we could connect these lines now using the digitizer tool. Um, so if I select a couple of line features here, and then I can use my combine line features tool. And this requires a distance tolerance. So just looking at my legend here, I've got a pretty actually large area that I'm missing data there. So I'll just bump up my number here. And that will combine those lines across that section. So I could run this on a much larger swath here. Um, as long as they were the closest sections to each other, they will connect correctly using that connection tool.
So just a little bit of a recap here. So we took a look at extracting vector features from classified data in our LiDAR point cloud. Um, so we looked at building features, uh, tree points and coverage polygons, and also power lines. So we used a pretty low resolution data set in all these examples, um, except for the power line data was a little bit higher, but still uh, not the highest resolution data that is available out there. So the better data that you have, the better vectors that you're going to get in the end here. Um, but just using the freely available stuff, you can see that we've really extracted some powerful um, vector data out of our LiDAR data set. So if you have any questions about today's presentation or if you need any help um, working with your LiDAR data, uh, there's our support email here, geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com. If this is your first introduction to Global Mapper and you're interested in purchasing, um, the people to contact would be orders at bluemarblegeo.com. And again, you can go back to that first video that covers how to register for a trial license um, if you want to test out the functionality of the software. We do offer a two-week trial. So in the next webcast in the LiDAR series, we'll be looking at custom feature extraction tools. So if you have any other feature types that you're looking to get out of your LiDAR data, um, we have some really powerful custom feature extraction and 3D digitizing tools that are going to let you um, extract some vector features out of that data. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.